All right, guys, so here we go. I'm on the scale uh, with uh, just a truck. As you can see, there's no trailer back there. And, uh, you know, obviously uh, it's, uh, it's kind of heavy, to be honest. An empty dually right here, if I see it correctly, uh, empty dually right now weighs 95 or 9,520 pounds. Uh, that's not bad at all. Not bad at all. Well, good morning. Oh my goodness. Today is gonna be a great day. Uh, mostly because uh, I'm picking up my new trailer. <laughs> that's correct, okay, let me, uh, first of all, I wanna say I am at MGS. Uh, it's in Denver, Pennsylvania, uh, right here. I'll put it on the screen. Um, their link or location stuff, their Google Maps thing will be in the description down below. Now, uh, I actually don't even live in Pennsylvania. Uh, some people thought I lived up here, uh, that's not true. But, uh, but no, I just, guys, I've talked about it before. Finding a experienced, knowledgeable dealer is crucial in this business because at the end of the day, you want someone to always, 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 oh my goodness, a motorcycle. <laughs> to always, always give you rec good like recommendations or something like that, right? Or good um, advice if you're ordering a trailer and you might make a mistake. Anyways, we are right now looking through all these trailers right here. I'll, um, this is a dually, 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 dually. Oh no, that's a 14 GN, somebody got one. Um, anyways, I think mine is right there. Actually, I see it. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna call this trailer, okay? I'm calling it the ultimate hotshot trailer. Wow, hold on, squirrel moment, but look, look at this, is this, is that, what, is that just a, is that the type of trailer that, so it won't rust, is that what that is? What, the kind of steel that they use, maybe, possibly? Anyways, okay, I'm calling it the ultimate non-CDL hotshot trailer, that, there you go, that's a correction. Now, you might be wondering, Alex, why are you calling that, right? So. I've now had five trailers, I think, or something like that. So I realized what what works and what doesn't work pretty pretty well. And now, oh man, this thing looks sick. <laughs> oh, it's so cool. That's so good. What did I? Okay. So, anyways, let's let me show you the trailer first, and I'll tell you why I'm calling. It. There you go. That's a better idea. Okay, check it out. Okay, so first and foremost, it is, all right, it's a 2020 Big Tex 16 GN, and the sun's really bright, so I'm, I apologize, but 16 GN with, here's the kicker, here's the secret sauce, here's the magic little touch, with Torflex axles, okay? Now, if you recall, or if, you, if you're like, hmm, wait, hold on, Alex, Torflex axles only come in 7,000 pound variants. How is your trailer a 16 GN? Exactly. So, because of you, right? You right here, you watching this video, because of the non-CDL hotshot transporters, because the demand in the trailer industry has gone up, Big Tex, or no, not Big Tex, Dexter, they're like, hmm, you know what we should do? We should make 8K Torflex axles because the 7K are a little bit too lightweight. And so that's exactly what they did. And I, th to my understanding, an 8,000 pound Torflex axle was started to be offered, or started being offered in 2020. That was when it started being offered. So this trailer in this variant with the tower flex axles, it is the first of its kind. You're watching it right here. This is the first trailer of this kind with 8,000 pound tour flex. Now, I think there's like 10,000 pound tour flex, but there isn't an eight. So there's seven and 10. And so now they're slotting right in the middle. So that's why this trailer is totally unique and totally special. And that's why I'm calling it the ultimate hot shot or the ultimate non CDL hot shot trailer. Okay. Obviously I'm going to be doing the D rating to, to 12,000 so I can pull it with my dually. That's not a problem. But why is it also a, a big techs why why did i get ak torflex on a different setup okay now here's the thing guys big techs is one of the only companies right here do you see the neck right there they're one of the only companies that does an eight foot neck everybody else does a nine foot neck now you could say oh they're just so cheap that's why they're doing eight foot i don't care what the reason is at the end of the day an eight foot neck is like it's needed 
because if I had a nine foot neck and a 40 foot trailer, I'd be well over 65 feet long. Right now I'm exactly 65 feet long. If I got a nine foot neck with a 40 foot trailer, I would be probably 66, 60, 66 and a half feet long. And that's just setting me up for a violation. So that's why I have to consistently go with big tech. So that's why this trailer, I'm dubbing it the ultimate hot shot, uh, the ultimate non-CDL hot shot trailer. Goodness gracious, I can't get my words. I haven't had any coffee this morning, okay? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, moving on. Let's talk the suspension setup, okay? Tor flex axles. Look, guys, why if you're if you're new, first of all, subscribe if you want new like if you want hotshot videos, trucking videos, business videos, stuff like that. That's what this channel is going to be about. Now, if you go back in my video in my older videos and you see why did I even get the 14 GN? Why was I so adamantly on getting such a lightweight uh, suspension? If you said Alex because parts availability, you're correct. Exactly right. 7,000 pound parts are available literally everywhere, okay? Let me give an example. I had a dust cap fly off yesterday at 7 p.m. Who's open at 7 p.m.? Not a single soul, not a single trailer dealership, not anybody, nobody's open at 7 p.m. And so I'm like, oh, I know where I can get a 7K dust cap. Tractor Supply Company. I went to Tractor Supply. Sure, it's the cheap dust cap that doesn't have the little grease with, like hole. Uh, sure, it doesn't ventilate or whatever, you know. So uh, it's not a good dust cap by any means. It does get me down the road though. And so that's why I consistently got all my trailer axles were always 7,000 pound leaf spring. Except for that one time I tried Air Ride, which was an epic fail. But <laughs> that's excluding that one. All the other ones were 7,000 pound leaf spring axles. Now, if you also go back and look at my older video, you will see that I've had a lot of problems with those axles okay and the problems are not because it's too lightweight of a suspension to haul the weight that I do it's specifically because those little bolts and parts and little things they wear out okay if you go back I made a video like where I explained how many breakdowns I had on my previous trailer guys those breakdowns were because the bolts that go through the little bushings and whatnot, they wear out. Those were because the equalizer bolt, right, that bracket that it hangs in, that wore out. So I definitely didn't want those same exact problems, just a little bit bigger because the 8K is bigger, right? And instead of the, using the same uh, bolts and stuff like that, it's just a little bit more heavy duty. I knew those those were the issues. Those are the problems. It's not because my tires are bad. It's not because the frame is crooked. It's because those little bolts, all those moving parts, they don't last long. And so that's why this suspension setup is totally radically different because now I don't need any of that. There's no equalizer box. There's nothing in between, right? This is an independent suspension. Each wheel is essentially independent. And what that means is I only have to worry about two pieces, brakes, and an axle. So if I'm if I get a blowout where it messes up my spindle, then I'm toast and I just need a new axle or I just need to make sure I'm on top of my brakes and I have back like stuff in the stock. Like in the, I'll have an extra set of brakes with me all the time because that's the only part that's now going to be not available anywhere. And actually when I order the trailer, MGS do their Man, these guys are solid, so I really do like them. I call them up like two weeks after, or three weeks after I ordered my trailer. I call them up, I'm like, guys, hey, can you order me extra brakes too so that when I go pick up my trailer, I'll have the brakes as well? And sure enough, they did. So now I'm picking up my trailer right behind me, and I'm picking up four brakes. So I'm picking those up as well. Uh, so that's gonna be really, really cool uh, because now I don't have to worry about, about brakes. Worst case scenario, I break down like, you know, 100 miles from now. It's like, at least I know I have trailer brakes so I don't get violations and stuff like that. So it's really cool. Guys, they, like this is why it's a lot of thoughts, a lot of planning, and then uh, Dexter is now on board with making these kinds of axles and Big Tex is now making a trailer that can support them. Now, so it's like all of this thing is coming up into this one situation where it's like, Dang, this trailer is gonna be really cool. This is gonna be really good. So I'm excited about that. Let's uh, let's enough of this standing around, walking around, because this aluminum trailer is reflecting the sun <laughs> right in my eyes. Okay. Now let me tell you, there's gonna be some modifications right away. Well, I mean, maybe not right away. Okay, but there's gonna be some mods that I'm gonna do, which is 8K axles come with oil bath. Okay, now the oil bath, I will be switching to grease. As you know, that air ride trailer that I had, uh, or I've made videos about it before, if maybe you saw, that air ride trailer was oil bath as well, but what happens on a single wheel uh, axle or single wheel setup, the tires flex too much and it breaks your seal on the inside and your oil always leaks out. So first thing is we're gonna switch it to grease, right? And I'm not right now because right now they're closed. It's like 30 minutes before they open, um, but I'm just saying later. And then, 
Um, again, you know, I've complained about Big Techs before. Uh, they don't have enough reflective tape right here. Um, they just have that little bit. I got a violation for that. So here you go, look, brand new trailer. Dealership isn't even open. I haven't even picked it up. And sure enough, Big Tech's not enough reflective tape. Come on, guys. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> there's some things you can't <laughs> fix. Oh, also, I was just looking at over and look at this, guys. Look at this right here. Um, can you see that? Here, let's just double check right here. Look, they still can't line up this plate right here and weld it. Like, really? Really, guys? Really? Brand new trailer, 16GN 2020, still can't, like, manufacture? Really? Come on. Anyways, <laughs> so obviously there's little things you can nitpick about, obviously. All right, and just like that, I am connected to the trailer right there. Um, and so what? Uh, what's up? Okay. <laughs> couple thoughts couple of uh, thoughts or something that so first of all i'm flipped around the wrong way because that's the exit so i'm flipped around the wrong way because i did it to take a picture uh that picture didn't work out so much but hey on my instagram guys if you go follow me on instagram it happens there first because by the time i edit record or edit rec record edit and then upload these videos it takes a little longer so all my people on instagram already knew about this days ago so but the point remains the same okay what's up first of all i got two backing plates as extras as spares right away one left one right so, and then I got an extra spare rim, which those rims are so darn heavy. Oh my goodness, the steel is so much heavier than the aluminum because I still have my aluminum spare from the old trailer, which I should have left with the old trailer, but anyways, whatever. Uh, but then the other thing is these backing plates, 8,000 pound backing plates, those two spares that I got, right? That had to pay for those. Goodness gracious, they're expensive. Holy cow, I think one backing plate is like $380. Whereas a backing plate on a 7K is like 75 bucks. So like you're gonna be paying a premium now I see the magnets are bigger like the arm is thicker everything looks more robust So I'm hoping that hopefully these brakes last a little longer the suspension lasts a little longer and therefore like my monthly maintenance premium prices go down But in reality, I don't know all I know is like gosh, it's expensive. You know what I mean? So I'm excited to hit the road. Let's go uh, get a couple things first of all I need the annual inspection second of all I need to go pick my load actually because I did book myself a load so got to go do that as well All right guys, so right now, okay, first of all, you can see right there. I'm loaded up. Look at that nice load I'm getting uh, rich not really kind of hey. anyways uh, I'm hanging out with CP Steve. We're just talking. Um, he's fixing my old trailer over there, but that's this video isn't about the old trailer. It's about the new trailer. Now, uh, I think like literally five seconds ago or, or five minutes ago, maybe in the video, I mentioned I'm going to switch it from grease to um, from oil to grease, excuse me. And that is literally what we're doing. So it's super simple. You basically take the hub, you take your wheel off, right? There, I'm on my second one. So you take the wheel off, you take the um, your drum off, then uh, you take out your seal right here. Look, see, so you want to go down to your bear right there. So here I popped out the seal and the, let the oil drain and put, just stuff it with grease and that's it. So, uh, that's, that's what I'm doing. All right. So, uh, small issue we've discovered with the, uh, with oil, uh, bearings, I guess. Uh, and that is that, you know, they sit in, outside when big Tex is making them for a while. And so when you add oil to it, it, starts to look uh people say like a milkshake i don't know honestly if it was that if that was a milkshake i wouldn't be drinking it so anyways let's look at the issue so if you're wondering why switch to grease uh well here's a good reason um the other reason would be uh, grease doesn't leak out when you have a not so 100% seal. All right guys, so I'm finally home with the new trailer and I apologize for the barking dog over there. That uh, that, that thing, you know, if it uh, if it passed away, I wouldn't even shed a tear. <laughs> I'm sure there's, I'm sure I'm not the only person that has an annoying neighbor with, uh, no, has a normal neighbor with an annoying dog. I'm sure I'm not the only one. But anyway, so I'm finally home with this thing. It's been pretty darn good uh, uh, and I, we, I, I need to give you guys the how much it weighs and kind of my little review because the moment I actually started this video picking it up, that's been over two weeks now. Uh, that's just because that, it took me that long to get unloaded. And the other thing is there's actually, um, in the next video, you'll see I actually um, have to get new axles already. Um, so yeah, I did mess up these axles and I already ordered two new axles. My trailer is less than two weeks old and I have to get two new axles on it. So uh, yeah, but anyways, there is a small review that I want to do. And so let's just jump inside. Let's go inside the house 
house. I cleaned out the kids' room, so I'm making that my office. So let's just pick it up in the office with a little quick review. All right, now that we're inside the house, I apologize for the echo, but first and foremost, the weight, okay? So I weighed my scale ticket, uh, and I mean, I weighed myself and got the scale ticket empty, um, but with like, put an asterisk on that because I weighed 16,500 pounds. My empty weight before on my old 40 footer was like 16,380, I believe. I'd have to go look at the old video, but um, I'll link the old video right here when I was picking up the old trailer, but it was like 16,300 pounds roughly. But here's the important part, right? The reason I said asterisk is that, first of all, I have an extra tarp with me. Um, usually I have two tarps. Right now in my truck I had three. Each tarp is like 95 pounds, okay? The other thing is I only had a quarter fuel, okay? So I didn't have a full tank. Now, sure, my, my fuel tank I believe on the Ford is only 48 gallons or 52 gallons. I, I'm not sure, but it's what, somewhere around there. Uh, so a quarter tank is probably like 15 gallons roughly, maybe 12 gallons. So that means I'd have to fill up for like 30, 35 gallons. And so maybe you forget that the tarp was there and you say that it was a full tank essentially, roughly, uh, I'm not sure. Um, and then the other thing is I don't have any chains with me, but I think I have extra straps. Um, so that's maybe a trade-off. But the other big thing is I got a toolbox. It's not a, it's a job box. And I was just fed up with all the plastic bins that I had because those bins kept on breaking. And so I got this job box instead. And I'm thinking that job box might be kind of heavy. Um, so I don't know about that either, but regardless 16,500 pounds That's my empty weight and if my max weight can be only 26,000 pounds That means I can take exactly 9,500 pounds now Okay, so that's the weight uh, or no last thing uh, so my trailer if you do 16,500 minus the 9,520 pounds I believe it was on the other uh, that, that the dually weighs empty that means this 40 footer weighs 6,980 pounds that's not bad, guys. Come on, I, like this is the this is the reason you go with the big decks, right? You want something that's light, and you want something that's short, right? Um, so, uh, I guess if another manufacturer wants to make a 48 foot trailer overall length, where 40 feet is deck and the eight feet is neck, let me know. Or if you guys know someone, right? And if it's under 7,000 pounds, like look at this. The problem is why you guys keep suggesting all these other manufacturers, guys. All of these other companies, they don't take aggressively lightweight as big as much as Big Tex does, unfortunately. Um, so that's the positive side of Big Tex, right? It's very light. It's it's reasonably uh, strong, sturdy. There is no problems. However, the downside of Big Tex is, first of all, in my first five days, I had a blowout. Okay. Now this will be in another video that's coming up, so make sure you subscribe. But so I had a blowout. The other thing is. I actually need new axles, which I think I mentioned in this video or something like that. Um, or yeah, I mentioned, so I'm, I'm gonna need new axles and I'll discuss that in the next video. Um, the other thing is um, my ramps. The ramps are fine, but the ramp door already broke off. So, I mean, that's just ridiculous, you know what I mean? So, uh, like, there is a problem, it seems, and I mentioned also earlier in the video, like, a little bit of welding alignment issues. Um, also, when the guy was, um, when the guy fixed my axle, which you'll see in the next video, um, he said the whole trailer was out of alignment. Uh, so, there seems to be a legitimate quality control problem with Big Techs, but nonetheless, you guys, it, it I, I can't go to anything else because then I'll be too long. And I think sacrificing that 40 feet, all of a sudden that means you can't do a 40 foot container. And at the end of the day, I've done a 40 foot container, you know, enough times or 220s. I've done it enough times where it's like, yeah, um, you risk losing that because at the moment you put a 40 foot on it, you're now over length. And with DOT picking on hot shots all the time now, it's really tough to knowingly, um, you know, cause yourself or open yourself up to those kinds of violations. Comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.